were easy to remember bad news than the good news. What's the news? What's my neighbor happening? Did I buy a, buy a brand new car? About TV? When it comes to good news, it's become history. You heard it today, tomorrow, forgotten. How come? What's the matter? We easily remember what's happening. Even the church people, before the start of survey, what's happening now? You know, what's the good news? Is there any balita? There's any news? That's a sad picture of Christianity. It's a predicament rather than good news and promotion or increase in salary or blessing. People tend to listen to and enjoy bad news. Why bad reports are appealing to people, even to the Christian? How come our ears love to hear gossip, what's happening in the life of others, than the praise report that somebody, God opened the eyes of the blind, somebody walk again, a cancer patient is healed. It seems, okay, okay, when it comes to the fire communication, ten people tend to listen. That's the black dog inside of the Christian heart. Yes. Yes. The peach and the negatives and the gossip. This is the result of the total domination of sin in us than the good stuff. And so we can say Paul experienced that and he was not condemning. In one way we were there, there. we were there, brother and sister. We are not exempted. But you and I will not live in that kind of roller coaster experience. You will not live all the rest of your life in a carnal state. Sometimes we are Christian, sometimes we are like the people in the world, or worse than the people out there. And so there's a complex inside of us, and we feed on more on the news and other things. That our witnesses and our attitude in chapter 7, we call it baby Christians, yes. or we call it half half Christian. Or we call it Christian for a long time and never grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those are midget Christian. You know. And listen to me, and this are reality, and God's heart is aching about this. Amen. Minister are crying about this. Hallelujah. Men of God, God, how is your people? Are they growing? Yes. Are they concerned of you? People today are concerned with the of their car that they saw going to hell. Yes. And so, sad but true, Christian, the profession is a profession today. And because of this, they affected the people out there. They become a stumbling block to many unbelievers. And that's some, some of the major reason why many unbelievers are not coming to church. Guys, that's a sad story, and so that's a very strong one. This is negative, but this is true. Gandhi, when he was 12 years old, he was reading the Gospel of John. He understood the predicament, the cost difference in India, five cost difference from the top to the lowest, to the poor to the poorest. And one day he came to the realization and said, this is it. I come to know what's the solution, what's, how can I resolve the problem. He was very young at the age of 12, trying to venture for concerning the hope of India. And he said, the gospel of St. John is in Jesus who might be the solution of the problem that my country is experiencing. And one day, then there was a deep pain in the heart of John and he said, and he published it in India. And he was said he was considering to be a Christian in one of the newspapers. And he said he's no longer considered to be a Christian in a Hindu and also a Hindu at the same time. And he said, I'd rather remain a Hindu and destroy that wicked Christian from within. A very miserable, it's a very, very painful experience of a little boy could have won billions and millions of Indians today when they have led an usher that young man to the feet of Jesus Christ. Guys, your influence is not ordinary. It's not ordinary, it's how you live, it's very, very important. Very, very important words are to thank God, praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Those are cheap, we can call that by the way I live, is it connected 
with Jesus who is the master in guiding me and Lord I cannot live the way I want to live unless you help me when I stumble you can pick me up when I am groping you can help me when I cannot walk you can carry my shoulder God you are my hope you are my butler you are my rock and my salvation Amen. Some individuals and unbelievers who are not attending church are more friendly compared to some Christians. They can smile at other Christians when you go in some of the churches. It's like an implant. They came in and they get out the same. And some are kind and some are generous. And I guess the Lord in the journey of faith is not, there are more gracious out there. It's not to condemn you, but to be able to understand how to live for the Lord. There are more Christian in attitude than some who are inside the church. There are more worse than the unbelievers out there. Some. And there are more generous compared to those who profess they know God. I know a person for many years since a pastor with all due respect of different churches and founder of few fellowship who preach so tight, very tight of money, and does not give a pastor does not give his tithe and offering to the Lord. If I am an unbeliever, I will believe the faith that he was modeling. It is complete opposite to what he confessed. It's a horrible thing to me. So chapter 8 is the fresh wind that will help each one of us to live in the realm of victory in the fullness of life. So presently, good now, good stuff now, let's go to the good stuff. Presently, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. No more condemnation. The hopeless, sinful state and the life that is incapable to change our condition with our personal effort, God, Jesus Christ, through the help of the Son of the Living God, remove the condemnation. The Bible says, though those who are in Christ Jesus, there's no more condemnation. Condemnation, when Jesus Christ came into your heart, condemnation and judgment for eternity and judgment at the present time is closed. Stop there. It's done. Which means you will become a child of God. Now this strong statement of an apostle Paul to all of us as far as the security and the stability of the believers not only in the present time but also in the future it has been established. I love that. In other words, chapter 8 is an open check group. And God is saying, I want you to know chapter 8, I sign my name and I give you a check and it's up to you to write up how much you want. It's all fully given to you. It's all funded as far as benefits in heaven are all concerned. Amen. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all His spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. With all more than 3,000 living promises are given to us. That's given to us. And God is saying, Blanche, it's up to sign your name. I sign my name. It's fully funded. In other words, from the beginning in between to the end, which we follow the Lord, there is no shadows of turning. There is no stumbling and falling. You can go ahead and on and say, God, because you're the master, you victorious to triumph over the cross. I will triumph and see you one day face to face. Amen. So the whole chapter is the proof of safety of the believers. Security not only from the present condemnation, but future perdition. Nothing, nothing shall ever separate us from the love of God is the triumphant conclusion when Paul the Apostle arrives. He said, nothing can separate us. Tribulation, no way. Distress, no way. Lack of food, famine, no way. Sword, no. Persecution, nakedness, all the things, present, and other things to come. The Bible says, we are more than conquerors. The word more than conquerors, we have Alexander the Great. And all the great emperors and conquerors of our time, of the time in the past, combined together, 
They have a limited time to become conquered. The word that is just there, more the word, more than conquer. We are super conqueror through Him, through Jesus Christ, who love us. Brothers and sisters, you are not an ordinary private in the army of the Lord. You are more than Charlemagne, Alexander the Great, or Julius Caesar. Amen. Beautiful word of God. God is so good. So the first reason why there's no condemnation and it's void of none effect because, I want you to see this beautiful word, because our relationship to Christ, when you are connected to Christ, nobody can pluck you in His hand, God, because you preserve me. There is an enormous longing, God, I could not leave us. All the apostles were in the point of turning their back from the Lord. And Jesus asked Peter, Peter, are you still going? Are you forsaking me? Lord, where can I go? You have the word of eternal life. Where can we go today? When the world has no security, economy in Australia is not secure, America is not secure, everything in this world is shakeable. The only thing that is not shakeable is Jesus Christ. Amen. Where can we go? It's only in Jesus Christ. The security is so brother and sister, Jesus Christ, because you're in Christ, God has brought you, give you the forgiveness, and then the bountiful gift is given to you. And one act of righteousness makes all people right in God's sight and the life is given to them. And that's the reason why David said, Blessed or happy are those people whose iniquities are forgiven. Blessed whose sins are those people whose sins are covered. Yes, there is joy for those whose record of their sins to the Lord has already cleared. In others, we just say, Jesus. Of all the sins I've committed on the past, when I come to know you, and it was a serious kind of commitment, it's not a hit and run kind of thing. I have come to the point of no return. I have to live on and follow you, Lord. The moment you say, Lord, sincerely, lovingly, Lord, I want to relinquish the touch, and Lord, I want to surrender everything. That moment in time, happy are those people whose sins are forgiven. Amen. And one of the people Amen. whose sins are forgiven. Yes. As you grow deeper into the Lord, the love of God will continue to strengthen you. The Bible says when Paul is being beat up to the left to the side, the love of God constrains me. Everything in this world, hope, faith, love. But the greatest of this is love, divine or agape love. And so when you walk in Him by faith, the very root that is connected with the Lord Jesus Christ will go down deep, deep down the soul. It's marvelous love of God. Love is the perfection. Love is the bond of perfection. I want you to know, regardless, I mentioned it last time, how big is the congregation. Regardless how gifted and the miracles are there. If there is bickering and there is biting, there's gossiping and there's quarrel and cars in the church, regardless how big is the church, I do believe from the cards of the Lord of God, Jesus is not inside the congregation. It is just like an organization, a propaganda and an acting, everybody act and dance. When there is no love and there is no harmony, something is wrong. The spirit of hair is in that fellowship when there's bickering and fighting and Usurping authority, I want to be the top, I want to be the leader. That is the spirit of Lucifer. He was not contented to be the greatest choir director of heaven, the, um, uh, the greatest angel with all the beauty and the splendor. He was not contented. He wants more. He wants to be equal with God. And so exactly as you grow in faith in the Lord, the root is going deeper and deeper, which means you love and you love whatever happened. Lord, this is your church. Lord, this is your work. This is not the name of organization. All the names of, of organization, one day will be nothing. Only one life will soon be passed. But only what's done for Jesus Christ with us. What you do today, the same, your heart full of worship, the united effort, the same. Don't you know that everything that you have done with the Bible Bible are all recorded in the book of works? And I tell you what, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. He will reward you publicly, openly, before the millions of angels and before angels and saints of God, apostles and Moses, 
publicly. He will call your name. Here are the wonders of your work. You probably don't know it, but I have tied it to you to let you understand from the least to the greatest of your work. I will never overlook that. Everything is recorded, brother and sister, what you do 